Hi, I'm John Twist of University Motors. Today I want to talk about electric cooling fans on the 1977 through 1980 MGB. I've got the ignition on right now, and I just want to show you that if we cross these two terminals, the electric fans run as long as the fuse is in the circuit. Here we've got the fuse on the earlier cars which has got a white with brown on one side, a green on the other. That green is the same green that's here. And on the later cars, that switched over to a, a circuit breaker, which is located uh, in about the same, same place, but it's located about right here with spade terminals. So you can always check the circuit, just check the switch, and make sure that the, the fans are running. Now, it's important that the fans are running anti-clockwise. Let me turn the ignition off so I don't spill fuel on the carburetor. The fans have to run anti-clockwise to blow the air backwards. Still, the, fans, the fan itself can be on backwards. We're going to take a look here and we're going to see that the slot, the slot right down here uh, that you reach uh, through to loosen the, the, uh, the grub screw, this, this slot right here is towards, towards the fan. Um, that angles the blades correctly. If you get the fan turned around, it's not going to blow backwards, but it's not going to blow as, as efficiently. But we're really today talking about the electrical circuit. So the fans take more energy than anything else in the car except for the starter motor. They draw a lot of current, and it all goes through this little tiny switch down here on the radiator. The part number on this is URP1126, so with a URP prefix, we call it an ERP switch, URP. Um, anyway, sometimes the, the switches aren't so good, and sometimes the switches are old. It's essential for the switch to work that there's no air up in here. Remember that the coolant recovery system works in this way, and that is that any air that's located in here gets forced out of here into the bottom of the expansion tank, then when the system cools, when you're, when you're not running, it draws fluid off the bottom of the tank up into here and the whole goal is to keep this full of water because if there is air here, this ERP switch will not close and the fans will not run. Um, sometimes the ERP switch wants to pop out of its position. It's not uncommon. First of all, you need to have the JAG ERP seal on here, not the one that comes with the with this, or sometimes you can take a zip tie, let me show you here for a minute, take a long zip tie, and if you trim about a third of the zip tie with a pair of shears, you can fit it through the cooling fins, come up underneath and zip, zip this thing tight. In 1980 they actually put a clip on it to hold it, but you can zip it tight. You can also take this hose clamp turn it around the other way so that the electrics abut the barrel of the hose clamp and that'll keep it from popping out. But that's not what I came to talk about. I came to talk about installing a relay. This is the standard SRB402 relay that fits here for the ignition or here for the starter. It says Lucas UK on it. It's just a standard single pull, single throw, normally open relay. I've made a diagram here on how this, how this guy works. So we're going to try to tune into this and try to, uh, try to make this understandable. We've got a green wire, this wire up here, that comes into our ERP switch. And we've got a green with black that comes out of the ERP switch and goes to the fan motor. I'm no artist. So when we go to install the relay here, we have green coming up to the relay and then um, taking a, a green leg off that back up to our ERP switch. The other side of our ERP switch comes around and runs the coil in the relay. Runs the coil in the relay and, and has to be grounded, so you've got to add a ground. And most easily this relay fits right up here. It's sort of unobtrusive, out of the way, and there's a bolt here that you can use for for securing it and for making that ground connection here. So when the ERP switch closes, then the relay trips and now the green, uh, the, the current that's available through the green wire 
can come over, make contact with 87, and go down and drive the fan. So the ERP switch is only running the relay. The relay is running the fan. So again, green comes in on 30. You'll see on the back side of these relays that they're it's a very stylized view here of what's going on. There's the coil and there's the switch. But 30 takes the green and 87 goes off to the off to the fan motor. 85 takes our wire from the ERP switch and 86 must be grounded. You do this and then all that current doesn't have to go through that little weenie uh, ERP switch and the ERP switch will last a lot longer. Now I'm no fan of uh, over relaying the car. There are places you can put relays that make things a lot, a lot better. Um, the headlights is one, the horns is another. Anyway, that's sort of it for today and a quick, a quick explanation of putting a relay on your fans 77 through 80 to make them work better. So, and this is for my friends in Boston, Massachusetts. Anyway, I'll talk to you about the summer party. The summer party is coming up on August 18th. Um, sign up now, please. I know a lot more people have rooms at the Hilton than are registered. So, please go online, universitymotorsltd.com. Follow the link right there on our website and sign up for our summer party. Hey, until then, if you've got questions, call me during tech time, 1 to 2 p.m., Monday through Friday. I'm happy to take your calls. And uh, after this, I go back to tuning this car, which is, us, which is, which is what I was doing uh, in the first place. So thanks all. Catch you later.